So, I finally got to see, and uh, might be everyone else, the two R-rated director's cuts of Rebel Moon. Called Chapter 1, uh, Chalice of Blood, and Chapter 2, Curse of Forgiveness. Now, I get, before I give you my thoughts on these versions, if you haven't know, what are my thoughts on the original versions, the PG-13 Netflix versions? I didn't like them. I think they were too similar to Star Wars. No characters that I care about. The closest was uh, Korra. Um, it was just too standard. It just feels like I got like just a generic, so big sci-fi epic. Um, and when I was, am I? And what are my anticipations for the director's cuts? Well, after watching the two ver original versions, the PG-13 versions, my excitement was a little worried because it wasn't just the that they're not gory enough, just that they're very bland in terms of writing stories and in terms of like bad and boring uh, it just feels like a generic sci-fi epic. Um, and uh, my hope was, hopefully they're, I don't think they're gonna be amazing, but I was hoping they are better. And spoilers, it is. It really is. Like, it's not like, the. it's not, I don't think this movie gonna, is gonna have a bit, these versions are gonna get a, Big falling compared to other Zack Snyder's filmography, specifically Snack Zack Snyder's Justice League. But I think it will be probably more watched than the PG-13 versions, cause this really, this really is the movie. These ver these movies are really the ones that they should have uh, be released in December and April. And it really feels weird that Netflix wanted to make PG-13 versions considering most of their popular content are very geared towards um, an adult audience. So it makes no sense why it's a streaming service. So you don't have to worry about uh, a whole like how much, well, I guess like how many views the film is going to get. Uh, but still, it feels weird. Um... Now, of course, the one thing people are going to uh, talk about with these versions is how gory and how does the violence handle it better. Um, well, for the most part, it's decent because no, it's very noticeable that these are very CG blood. And a lot of times, it really is, it looks fake. But... But e even that, whenever the violence and the gore show up, it feels a little disturbing. Maybe as equal as like Dead Point Wolverine, where the gore in that movie and these versions are very over the top. It's especially at the like the opening of Rebel Moon Chapter One, Chalice of Blood, immediately got in got me into it because of the how the Opening handles it and how the villain played by a screen is probably more threatening and more mess messed up than than the PG thirteen versions. Like he really is more menacing. Uh, I think the cl the characters not well obviously not fleshed out enough. They're a little more made better. Specifically, Korra, who gets more of her backstory more fleshed out, though it's basically the exact same story, just with more, just extended. Uh, and Titus is kind of cool as well. Um, but the other characters were okay. Um, now, of course, the story is basically the exact same as the original, ver the, the original versions. Uh, just with extended scenes like Jimmy who is the robot voiced by Anthony Hawkins got more screen time in the in chapter one as opposed to part one where he was just in the beginning then shows up at the end he gets more screen time though he mostly just 
goes around like the grains and weeds, just just doing some peaceful things. But he, then later he decides to go a war, especially in chapter two, where he literally brutally kills three uh, aliens that were spying on the farmers, and then they he finds so many other troopers. We saw this in the original version. But it's more gorier and more brutal, and the dude is still, and the robot is a very super robot. Like, he is bonkers. Um, I don't know about this, but really, I got an interview, no, no, I got it. I saw an interview from Zack Snyder where it said, like, the, the, already original, slightly more satirical feel to it. And... Honestly, I was when I watched it, I can kind of see that. I don't know why, but something about it feels a little bit different feeling than the PG thirteen version because with the, of course, R rated gore doesn't really mean it's gonna be great. Come, I mean, come look at Live Free or Die Hard, Hellboy twenty nineteen, and Terminator Dark Fate. But it made it for a very different type of movie experience where you, in the PG-13 version you're just watching a regular uh, sci-fi epic that doesn't really do anything original and it's sort of similar with the director's cuts but I think it has a different feel to it due to its more intense and violent tone um I mean obviously they're not perfect cause chapter 2 especially is probably the weakest of the two not only because the uh, the entire film reminds me a lot of the episode of the Mandalorian, uh, episode four, the one that was inter that introduces Cara Dune. It reminds me a lot of it, where the farmers just preparing for a big battle against the enemies, with a bunch of where they shoot at things and preparing for war and building, making weapons and building traps and stuff like that. It remind me a lot of that episode. And as watching reviews that didn't that didn't bother me, but watch but when I watched chapter two, it really noticed it because the what a lot of critics say that this movie has too much slow motion. And yeah, that is true. Chapter two has a scene where they're a bunch of weeds and they just rolling up so slow. And all the flashbacks that the supporting characters have are done in slow motion. Like, it didn't really need slow motion because Korra's flashback didn't have a lot of slow motion. Only, like, one scene where she's at war in Chapter 1. But it didn't need a lot of slow motion. That's... Bit a bit too much, and of course the scene where Titus uh, and some other dudes uh, shoot a troopers and goes like, oh, yeah, this this goes a little too long. So yeah, it's it's very noticeable that the director's cuts aren't still perfect, but at least they're watchable enough, like more than the original versions. Um, and one thing that I did not talk about, but apparently Zack Snyder is going to make, or wants to make, six movies of these. If that happens or not, because the movie, because chapter two ends with the king, like the, like, this king who kills the princess's father, or some, and he is going to, like, do some schemes at, at the end. Maybe at the beginning of Rebel Moon 3, if that ever makes. But yeah. So, Rebel Moon Chapter 1 and Chapter 2 director's cuts are better, but not spectacular. They're watchable, but they're not spectacular. Um, so, that's my thoughts on it. Peace out. Bye.